Alright, enough pussyfooting around. It's fucking Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. July 22, 2021. My name is Alex. I'm your host at the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. It's powered by Incorporating Associates. You already know. Um... <laughs> well, my first word is, um, you know, I'm thinking hard. You know, I'm thinking hard and I should probably not think out loud. Not that I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking, what can I say and what don't I have to say or what should I not say, you know, because I am in fact omitting a lot of truth. And that's only because it's not going to help uh, the mission. It's not going to help the organization. As such, I suppose we can talk about secret societies. And uh, if not secret societies, at least the hierarchies that exist in regular society. All right. Watch this. Or listen in on the intersectionality of secret societies and their hierarchies. When we're young, we like to think, um, I guess if you have a type A personality, if you are uh, the alpha type, you want to... You want to be a part of a gang, if not the leader of a gang, a squad, a crew, a clique, an organization, what have you. And of course, you want it to be uh, expanse. You want it to be a lot of folks, a lot of individuals. You want it to have a lot of reach. And if not a lot of reach, then impact, significant impact and a reputation for their work. So if I'm rolling in a, a crew, which I have before, a handful, you see, so I've always been an independent contractor. If, at heart at least, I've always been an independent contractor. I have been on uh, on individuals' payrolls. I have been on payrolls for organizations. But at the end of the day, I negotiate for myself and I, uh, all I seek is improvement. I seek that knowledge, that understanding of becoming a better person, becoming a better, a better associate to everyone, becoming an effective corporate cowboy. Now, in my world, I want to run with a group of corporate cowboys. And ideally, I don't want to have to manage or oversee anyone. I like to, uh, I like to depend on my associates to the extent that they're going to carry out whatever work it is they're contracted for without me having to hover over their shoulder, having to helicopter around them and micromanage how they handle their business. Because as an independent contractor, their work is their business. When when you begin to take on more individuals, not just bring them into the fold, but actually take them up under your wing, you create a hierarchy. You create a hierarchy that you can hold over someone, you can lord over someone. Do it often enough or, or do it blatantly enough. Be belligerent about it. Be belligerent about it and you will, um, so, what is it? Resentment. Resentment. Not discord. Resentment. And I've been in a handful of situations myself like that, both as a 
a quote unquote a mentor or a quote unquote mentee. And all that comes back to how successful the mentor mentee relationship is is directly related to the social skills and the people skills that exist between the two parties. How they manage conflict, how they how they manage social uh, interaction. And there is a hierarchy in a sense. In an ideal world, it's mutually agreed on. One person will be the mentor, the other person will be the mentee. But what must also be agreed on is up to what point is the mentor mentoring and the mentee menteeing, right? So when you get a mentor, it's going to be in one aspect of your life. One or two or a small handful of aspects. It's not going to be every aspect of your life. I mean, shit, I could run your life for you. We could run your life for you. Obviously, we charge, though. So you want some kind of consultation like that? Some kind of career? Some kind of life consult? Yeah, we can do that for you. You can shoot us a DM. But that's just going to be expensive. It's going to be pricey. And it still comes with risks. Why? Because individuals like me can only pull your strings insofar as you have slack to pull on and so far as your strings actually connect to some form of external control onto the world now you can do this yourself you, you can identify uh, any potential problems and identify any potential solutions within your situation so long as So long as uh, you are able to take a step back and recognize or realize how your actions influence outcomes in the real world, right? Right? So even in a hierarchy, even in a hierarchy where you're given orders... And it's your duty to carry out some task. How you carry it out are the strings you are pulling. Now, they could be internal as far as motivation goes, as far as you feeling motivated to actually get the work done, so far as uh, you not being lazy or you not procrastinating. Or they could be external, you reaching out to somebody else divvying up your task into smaller and smaller portions, delegating some of the work, interacting and influencing others, making introductions, making connections in order to create additional levers, 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 data, data, right? create additional levers so that when you pull strings those levers are actuated and some result happens somewhere else down the line down down the chain of command down the chain of command that you've created essentially by Establishing this lever. And again, the lever could be a, a connection, it could be in, in business, it could be in, in politics, it could be in government, it could be in corporate. The whole point in establishing levers is that recognizing that you exist in a hierarchy 
gives you ample opportunity to either flatten that hierarchy or bolster it. Either flatten that hierarchy or augment it, enhance it. And that could be through your individual work. On an organizational structure, you could find yourself hierarchically positioned below someone else, be- below your manager, right? Because they're above you, they're supposed to be supervising you, they may or may not make more money than you, depending on the compensation plan. But on an organizational structure, they might be above you, and yet still you might have more influence, and still you might have more connections, still you might be more valuable to the organization, where your manager is just the manager, and they manage you, but you, you manage the world around the organization. You are the point man, essentially. So when you think about it, the span of control as you go lower and lower down an organization, it gets wider and wider. Now in the age of technology, this is becoming more and more intermixed. And I can appreciate it because I, I may or may not ever find myself in the position of a CEO nor do I wish it upon me or anybody else because, I mean, as a corporate head hunter, I might find myself on the receiving end one day, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But technology and communications has already leveled a lot of that hierarchy for us. It's put a lot of people on the same position within literally arm's reach, within fingertips reach. We could dial out, we could message. You have social media applications like LinkedIn, just to name one, it's a professional, quote unquote, professional social media platform. So as in, as an entry level, as a forever entry level worker, let's say, as a corporate cowboy, anybody who wants to be found on LinkedIn can be found. I mean, if you want to find other people not on LinkedIn, then you got to do it the old fashioned way. (laughs) And that's a whole other episode. But uh, a shelf stalker at a large uh, grocery store, like a, I don't know, what is it, a Safeway or a Rayleigh's or a Albertsons, a shelf stalker could easily get in touch or at least connect with the CEO or somebody in a higher division, in a higher department, in a higher rank than they are. By the simple fact that technology and communication has given them that opportunity, is is that tool they can use. So as one generation leaves and another generation enters uh, the corporate world, because corporate has more or less worked to isolate itself, to shelter itself, to survive and not grow. I mean, it it hasn't grown a whole lot. We can argue that profitability and fucking dividends have grown over time. And, but at the end of the day, what the fuck is money? If your organization is worth shit and the structure the structure you keep, hold on, the, the structure you've manifested, the structure you've actualized, you've realized, and the company you keep is worth utter shit. 
How do you justify that? How, how do you justify fearing growing old with nothing, right? When plenty of people have grown up with nothing. They'll, they'll, they won't even just take what you have. They'll just rip you. They'll just rip you a new one and not give a fuck about what you have. <laughs> they'll leave you intact. They'll just, they'll just rip you. <laughs> I mean, RIP, you know? <laughs> don't know why I trailed off from the hierarchy, but essentially it's the hierarchy that provides that conflict. There's motherfuckers who want to, uh, who are dead set on flaunting and flexing the hierarchy that because they might be my manager, they're in a position to be better. Well, because because they might be my manager, they're they're in a position morally better than me. And um, well, I mean that's that, that's debatable. I'd be happy to sit down and discuss it with them calmly. But then they make themselves unavailable. They make their time scarce. When they don't really do shit. They don't even work. So, getting getting through to someone who's stuck in their position, and I mean stuck as in uh, either only willing to work to the letter, or uh, yeah, I, I know that rolls a lot of unions into that too. But hey, a, a union is a fucking hierarchy. And there's a whole, there's a ton more, how do I say, there's a ton more um, shit eaters at the bottom than there are at the top. Even though the ones at the top like to claim that they're the ones who uh, are the, they are the ones catching the flack. When if they really empowered the worker, if they really trained the worker, educated the worker, Disseminated that knowledge to the worker, they would have they at the at the top would have to work less, and they could uh, complain less and whine less about it too. But um, <laughs> in a hierarchy, there's a whole lot of opportunity. Now, to me, that puts the hierarchy that makes the hierarchy a paradox. Why? Because even if I'm at the bottom. I do want to climb, but I don't want to be at the top because I understand that there is a uh, very healthy amount of churn that takes place at every level of the organization. There are some individuals who are more than cutthroat, damn near psychopathic, will do anything to get promoted only to get knocked the fuck down. Why? Because they did it unrighteously. They did it without integrity. Have no fucking honor. They lie at every twist and turn. They they think they're snakes, but they don't have human nature. They just move animalistic. And so they get clipped with the fucking spade. I mean, which is fun too, right? Those occasions are rather rare. Psychopaths are... uh, rather rare in our society, especially those that have ambitions or delusions of grandeur. They are rare, but they do exist. And especially in corporate, because corporate is that type of playing field that incentivizes psychopathy. And psychopaths, they... They more than don't give a fuck about the hierarchy. They'll do what they have to. They'll burn who they need to in order to move up. And it's a corporate cowboy's job not to keep the status quo, right? But to maintain integrity in the organizational structure. To maintain influence. If I work under somebody, if somebody else is my manager, I do pay homage to my manager. Why? Because building my manager also builds my organization. Building my manager builds my reputation. It's just about working the uh, working the hierarchy. 
It's about uh, paying respects, paying homage. Or uh, what is it called? <laughs> Building equity. Building equity in somebody else's name. <laughs> like when you name drop. But if your manager's a piece of shit, what you think somebody else is going to give a fuck who you are? No, no. So you got to keep your manager honest. Otherwise, what the fuck good are they for? If you can't use them as a business card. I'll talk to you later. Have a nice Thursday.